Hello everyone, today is day 21 of our 30 day watercolor flower series and today we are painting forget-me-nots. Forget-me-nots are tiny little blue flowers that come kind of bunched together. So we're going to create a few different bunches and you'll see in our sketch. And there's about five petals on a forget-me-not, but in this loose style, we're actually not going to paint the exact number of petals. I'm going to show you a little trick that I have. So the trick that I have is I paint an M on the top. The idea of an M doesn't have to be an exact M. And then I do a W on the bottom. I leave the center open for that beautiful yellow center that it has. And then you can see here we've created three kind of bunches. And then we're going to paint little buds on the ends and some really simple leaves. The greenery is really beautiful. Just an overall really beautiful and simple flower. Like I said earlier, forget-me-nots are a beautiful shade of blue. I am mixing some cerulean blue with some blue I already had on my palette. But just an overall really light blue in a more watery mixture so that the tone is very light. Now I'm painting kind of a bumpy cursive M on the top and a wonky bumpy cursive W on the bottom. That is something that really helps me remember the shape of the forget-me-not is I'm painting just some loose bumps that resemble an M along the top, loose bumps that resemble a W along the bottom, and then you can connect them and shape them in so many different ways. So you'll see I kind of use that idea to create different shapes, different bumps, um, doing them thinner in certain areas. So definitely you can play around with that whole concept. And then here we're starting to create our first bunch. So I paint some flowers that are kind of front and center. They're the main ones. And then I start to fill in the gaps and the awkward spaces with half hidden flowers. So, you know, a little bumpy M here or a little bumpy W there to kind of peek out underneath the flowers that are front and center. I think it looks nice to leave some gaps between the flowers because this particular flower is on a branch and they can be bunched together a little bit, but they do tend to be more singular. This isn't a very heavily bunched together flower. Now I'm picking up some really bright phthalo blue and while these flowers are still wet, we're going to tap that color right around where our center is. So we're leaving those centers nice and big and open because forget-me-nots have a beautiful bright yellow center. But we want to add some accent so that our petals don't fall flat by bringing in another color that can bloom and bleed while everything is still wet. So this is one of my favorite ways to add lots of contrast and interest in kind of a plain flower. And to get this perfect bleeding effect, make sure that your flowers are not too wet and that the color you're adding in is more saturated with pigment than with water. Our first grouping is done, so we're going to work on another grouping of this flower. I like to stick to the general rule of threes um, for most things, not everything. And so I'm going to do three bunches of flowers. The first bunch that we've already painted is going to be our heaviest bunch, has the most weight. And then I'm making kind of a middle bunch that's towards the middle, a little bit leaning to the right. And then we're going to have an even smaller bunch that is leaning very far to the left just to help balance everything out. So when you have a lot of weight on the right side of your painting, if you bring something, even if it's small, to the left, but you bring it really far out because we're going to have this bunch to the left lean farther out, it really helps to feel balanced in the overall painting.
we need to let our flowers completely dry because we are going to add more details but not while it's still wet so we're going to pick up some sap green and start working on our greenery i'm keeping the details of the forget me not stems really thin and really delicate I'm adding a slight curve to my stem because anytime you can add movement, you increase the interest of your piece. And then I'm peeking the greenery between the flowers. So I really like the look of the greenery peeking out between these flowers. It gives a very delicate feel to the entire thing. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to keep some space between the flowers and not just have too many flowers bunched together. For this greenery, I'm using very light pressure with just the tip of my brush. One of my rules with greenery is start light because you can always go back and add more and thicken up your stems or your brush strokes, but it's really hard if you do a thick stem and it looks awkward to go back and fix it. So always start really light with your greenery. You can always add more. And then I'm making sure that at the end of my bunches, I have kind of these tiny little flower buds. I'm leaving a little bit of white space in some of them for a highlight, keeping them really small and simple. And you can see in some of my greenery, I have not connected every line. Those are called implied lines. And when you're doing loose watercolor, you don't have to connect everything perfectly. If you have the idea of it and you paint things in the shape, of an implied line, you will create the illusion of lines without having to paint every single thing. When we paint too many lines, we become too over detailed. You lose that loose and um, flowy feel. Forget me not leaves are simple and just that typical good leaf. So we are bringing some simple stems out and doing my two stroke leaves where I'm painting kind of a half circle, long half circle shape on either side of white space to maintain a vein in the leaf. I'm picking up some sap green straight from my palette so that there is less water and a higher concentration of pigment, and I'm dabbing that into my greenery while everything is still wet. This creates a lot of contrast and kind of our shadowy colors. We always want to find a way to add mid-tones and darker tones on top of the lighter tones we already have. So. When we add color that can bleed and blend while things are still wet, it gives us a lot of that opportunity to create depth. Now that our flowers are completely dry, we are going in with more of the phthalo blue in, again, a higher concentration of pigment with less water. And this is going to be our harsh, dark tone. So we've got our light tones from the initial flower painting. We bled in some of the mid-tones and now we want that dark harsh line for our nice contrast. So I'm just adding a couple of lines around the center. I don't want it to be too even so I'm just dotting them here and there and I'm not circling the whole thing exactly just a little bit. A little bit goes a long way with the darker contrasting colors. I'm rinsing my brush and picking up some more sap green, mixing it with the green on my palette, and then just going in and adding a couple of spots of those darker tones. This is the point in the painting where I tend to fiddle around a little bit, making sure that everything has lots of contrast and layers and nothing is falling too flat. Now we are going to paint the center, so make sure you have rinsed your brush very well because we don't want any green centers and we're going to mix up a bright yellow using some of my darker yellow and some of my lighter yellow and we are just going to tap that into the flower again you want to make sure your flowers are completely dry because if the blue and the yellow mix you'll have green centers so we want that bright beautiful yellow center because it gives such a nice contrast to this blue flower and i'm just keeping it simple just doing a small dot in the middle of every single flower.
And with the center finished, our forget-me-nots are done. So the last thing we do is we get to add it to the day 21 spot on our watercolor flower guide. Forget-me-nots are just too classic to forget about <laughs> in this guide. I knew I had to include them. They are one of my absolute all-time favorite flowers. Thank you so much for being here today while we painted day 21 the forget-me-nots. I will see you tomorrow for day 22. Bye.